Hello internet, welcome to Navy for that. My name is Ache. This is a naval aircraft video featuring the Firefly Mark V, the apex predator of the Royal Navy. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. First things first, we are going to review this in semi detail. I said semi because we look into things that matters to us naval lobby players. Then we will talk about a special guest we have a summary after that and at the end some gameplay and shorts so if you see VA about some parts of the video it is fine use the chapter thing and jump to the part that you want to see so what about the apex predator thing well this plane sits at 4.0 it does come with ordinance that is capable to deal with targets up to 6.0. So that means that this is optimized for naval AV. It also comes with uh, an arrestor hook, but I mean, nowadays it doesn't have much use. It might have it in the future. The thing is, with this plane, you will be able to rack one kill, even two per game, if you are lucky. And then you have a low repair cost because, as you know, in Naval RB, these things get shredded to bits and keeping costs down is always good. If we look into the aircraft in detail, it reveals some armor, very standard, and in the modules, just nothing to note apart from, you know, the, the guns in their wings and the central fuel tank and then this guy here i like to call him nigel but we will talk about him in a minute the 420 millimeter hispano mark 5 they're a bit inaccurate and they come with enough ammo for a good couple straight fronts but let me tell you that you are not gonna see yourself in that situation very often the default belt is good to deal with pity boats only and things that lack armor in general. The ground uh, target belt will pen some light armor like main caliber turrets of destroyers and cruisers and secondary armament but it lacks the HE in my opinion and the omnipurpose will give you the chance to put it on and forget about it because it will perform decently against a lot of targets. The ordnance in the other hand is the strong point of this aircraft Having the possibility to mount two 1,000 pound bombs at 4.0 is insane. It's even, it's not even optimal. <laughs> but let's go one by one and we will talk about its uses uh, afterwards. So the first one that you unlock is the 250 pound bomb that is only good for pity boats and it will struggle to destroy even uh, DD. Uh, destroyer so yeah next <laughs> the uh, 500 pound bomb does have the power to destroy the these and they're like and some like cruisers but you have to be very accurate with them the uh, 1000 pound bomb has 290 kilograms of pure dopamine that thing has 30 meter radius of destruction this bomb can deal with anything you can encounter up to 6.0 pretty much. The RP-3 rockets have enough penetration to deal with light cruisers and destroyers. It does have nearly 5.5 kilos of TNT, so that's a good payload and yeah, you just need to be accurate and hit the spot where the magazines are or where there's some ready to use ammo so if you play this plane at a 4.0 lineup you will be find yourself using these two lineups because these give you a higher chance to get a multi-kill at 4.7 you might face targets that need their 1000 pound bomb but still at 4.7 you're gonna find yourself in games where the 500 pound bombs and the rockets are just adequate and you have higher chances to get 
more than just one kill. A 5.0 in Haiga, the 500 pound bomb with the RP3 rockets, is still okay for light targets, but at this point you start facing light cruisers and heavy cruisers more often. So a change to the 1000 pound bomb is recommended, not because the lack of light targets, but because the anti-air at this BR and up it starts to get heavy and HEVT is kind of all over the place. So for that reason, you can't think about the luxury of doing a second pass, even if it feels like a bit overkill. It is better to secure a kill than to come back to the vehicle selection empty-handed. And now I would like to talk about Nigel. But before, I want to remember you that if you don't want to hear Nigel's history, you can just skip ahead. In real life, he was the spotter and radio operator of the plane. But in War Thunder, he's there just to catch bullets because he is a gunner without a gun. He's just a mid shield for the pilot. That is his only duty. But what if, as it has been mentioned a thousand times in the forums, we implement the scouting mechanic of ground battles. You can limit this if you fear exploits with basically time as cooldowns, range, maximum amount of reward slash discount that you can get using this ability. So there are ways to implement this into the game to make it better. I just can't understand why and how this guy has been sitting there doing f all for years but now my friends i would like to make an appeal in nigel's name gaijin oh gaijin please if you are there listening help nigel please he is a good lad he's got a digital wife and kids he has to provide binary bread to them, Gaijin. If you are there, for Nigel's sake, give him a job. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Moving on to the last bit, I have to say, this plane's characteristics and his little brother are optimized are ideal to grind the early ranks of Blue Water Tech 3 up until 5.7 in my opinion. So let's talk about its capabilities that quick before we get into the gameplay. Remember that this plane is not the fastest out there. Uh, you'll see yourself in being chased or chasing, so remember there's other sort of things that can outrun you. This plane is heavy, not heavy heavy, but heavier than your regular fighter plane for sure. That makes it good at energy retention while flying in a straight line. But once you turn this thing, it bleeds energy like there's no tomorrow. This plane breaks at around 700 km per hour, which is really good. But remember, compression, that makes uh, handling difficult. But thanks to its docile nature, once you have dodged a couple times while approaching, you have bled enough speed to have good enough maneuverability to align and aim your bomb and plenty of speed left to get you to release point in almost one piece. The four 20mm Hispanos are going to get the job done. They will shred to pieces enemy PT boats and will pen light armor. As we have said it's very versatile, making it the best option for us naval nets of the universe. Having an arrested hook might seem like it's not that important but it will give you an option not only of landing in an aircraft carrier but spawning from one giving you that extra option which nowadays with enduring confrontation on every weekend it is something to consider just because having that extra spawn point is better than not having it and now for the gameplay I am bringing you 5.0 games so you can see this thing in action against higher tier targets and on the heavy anti-aircraft fire in some cases 
So yeah, get ready. Here we are, showing you the road to get the Firefly. We're playing with the Dido, uh, which is a scoutless light cruiser. So yeah, this is going to be interesting because we need to get kills and assist and try to be as close as possible to the to the cap point so we can affect the game and cap if needed so here we are launching or so yeah launching a few tops there and then engaging this alpha player at a range of uh, 9 kilometers which gives us a round 80 millimeters of pen so that is more than enough and um, if we do something if we don't hit something critical it's basically going to over pen it's gonna explode in the water so yeah we've just acquired range and yeah we are shooting some AP correcting the range and those are okay there we go that's the first one there <laughs> somebody attack him okay yeah so african gulf um it's not the best map uh, it's just because it does have one spawn for for cruisers and it's on the one of the very edges We change to Heichi here because we are engaging at uh, 10 kilometers away. And the soul is we want to save precious SAP ammo. Once, once we are on top, uh, we change to SAP. Let's see if we can get him. Oh. We've been shot. Let's just see where those are coming from here we are being focused by a German destroyer that comes up hits like a truck well, it's fine this guy's not helping <laughs> that smoke is not covering him it's just making it making my life more difficult to be to be honest but it's fine we know we know where to where to head and we can clearly see where those shots are landing so that's fine we lose the, um, the target there but as you can see we are hitting where we want so we want to hit the back turrets that's where the ammo is kind of easier to to reach so there we go that's the second one guys, so oh, yeah, next! <laughs> so again, I am trying to push a little bit, I'm not going forward like crazy because my team is doing a, a really good job decapping C and capping it for us and getting B this early is huge, that means that I can still lay back and wait for for the game to tell me where do I need to go right now I'm, I'm just happy standing here in the second line hitting some BDs those looked amazing to be fair but uh, anyway we changed to HG to save some ammo and we started to get some heads because I mean he's just standing still and I was uh, I 
wasn't ready for this engagement though. He he started uh, shooting at me before I knew he was there. So yeah, eight kilometers and thirty. He's giving me like about nearly ninety minutes of pen. So again, we are going to be or uh, over penetrating this water. He managed to get fire because if you if you notice he's just shooting me H E which is perfect. We are perfectly safe from this distance. The problem is that he can and he is hitting my turrets. And he got my bridge so I couldn't change my profile. So I couldn't like kind of answer to this to his fire but now we are able to turn and trying to get the back two reds onto him and by the time we just repaired so we are going to unleash the full rage of the dido onto this border he is just going backwards I'm not a huge fan of doing that. I think he should be using his speed to dodge. But, oh well, I'm not complaining. He's half cooked. He's got his front uh, turrets out of commission. He's not looking very good. right there he, he changed the um, speed so that's why I missed that one and this one as well but yeah this one should be on target and okay he's done he went from 25% to 0% when all the shots landed so there might have been a little detonation going on there On to the next one. And now Martin is doing a really, really good job here. We've got the three caps. I can just, you know, stay behind and keep on shooting this uh, DDs from afar. But well, not so far. It's uh, six kilometers and a half. <laughs> this is perfect range for me, isn't it? This is just a perfect game so far. We're still 46% of crew and my team is doing really good. So yeah, African gold for use. So uh, here we've got another friend. But yeah, I want to highlight the importance of the damage control at the beginning of the of the porter engagement because he was able to put me in a very difficult situation while I thought I was very safe at that range because my armor was enough and he, he didn't have any um, semi-armor piercing on him so I was in a very safe situation but with that fire and getting the bridge uh, out uh, he put me in a very difficult situation there but uh, thanks to the damage control uh, we were able to come out with another kill and I believe that's him trying to get a kill he's, as you can see he's moving around trying to test the waters seeing who he needs to bomb or top he's He's testing the waters clearly. Anyway, here we've got another constant speed destroyer. Sailing at a profile that is kind of difficult for me, but I mean, it's fine. At this point, I, I really, I really wish I had the HGVT on me, but at the time of this recording, the, the Dido wasn't spaded. So now he's finally diving. He's four kilometers away. He's 
if I have the edge of the D, I could do something. But here I'm trying to to cover Uncle Brock. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that dive that looks perfect. Anyway, don't think he dropped. <laughs> What's going on? getting anywhere close here. I'm just wasting HE. But I'm, I don't know, I'm trying to cover. Yeah, he still has his stop. <laughs> I don't know, maybe he went onto the... Um, he didn't want to drown the, uh, the torque or something. I don't know, it's really strange. Anyway, let's uh, keep on working with this guy. Yes. Yeah, he's fine with me. Oh. Okay, that's a little detonation there. He has 20% crew left. He's, he's toasted. Uh, he's got a nice barbecue burn on there. Getting hit. A couple more shots. If I, if I hit the back and I get a couple compartments off, he will be, he will be done. 10% of his one more shot. Ah, good. We could deal with someone else. Okay, this is the deal. That's a uh, cool secure. And by that time, I am dead. Because this guy's been pummeling me. <laughs> well done, you. Well done. Anyway, five targets there. So, it's fine. The getting B back. That's gonna just make the game last enough for me to to bomb somebody here. Yeah, that's me that. And my team moving in. We are <laughs> decapping B already. Oh my god, this was just the perfect game for us and I believe. They're moving in on to C but it's uh, it's covered and it's too late. gonna help me the big happy name apparently okay we need to be quick here we are five and a half hundred kilometers brother she's gonna make our handling a bit of a little stiff it's okay this one just right behind this rock and there we go a line in it's not even shooting at us it's my propeller. <laughs> anyway, that's one kill. And that's game. GG. Right, so let's do a few shots. In here, I've got a little, a little chevron going on there, so we are gonna assist our teammate, which is. He's got his gunners onto him, but I don't think he is able to fire with his main guns at him, so he's in kind of a difficult situation. He released the top, so let's just strafe him. And, okay, that's, uh, that's our teammate safe there, and let's see if we can get a double kill, because we still got the two 1,000 pound bombs here. So, yeah, it's looking promising. The thing is, by diving, by helping my teammate there, I put myself in a rather difficult situation to to get a kill here. We're gonna try. There's uh, two DDs shooting at me already. Gonna try and get use this rock as a cover. It's not gonna be as much. Even DDs, especially American ones, have uh, a great short range AA cover. So here's another one. This is a convoy game, which is one minute and a half Attention left. To the map. That wasn't very accurate, innit? <laughs> anyway. 
So uh, this guy is in a position where he can uh, destroy a couple of uh, cargo ships that we've got left right behind me and a couple another another ships there so it's a it's my target so yeah we release leave the bombs there and that detonates a sample that's just yeah it's such a good kill this is a enduring confrontation game I just wanted to show you this because okay i break the uh, the landing gear because of the catapult it puts you in such a high speed in very short time that it's kind of hard to react so yeah but anyway as we said before in the guide it's important to use naval aircraft in naval because it does give you the option to spawn on an aircraft carrier and here it makes all the difference because if you look at the screen the, the ranges are massive and it's not the same spawning from this distance in an aircraft carrier it's not the same than you know spawning at an airfield which uh, you, you'll be like <laughs> 20 kilometers away and that will make you you know take altitude and all that but it will take you like 10 minutes to reach your target something like that maybe maybe yeah something about around 10 minutes which is it's not worth it i mean having the possibility to use naval aircraft why wouldn't you and as you can see i am able to like affect the game and get a decent altitude before the enemy gets closer let me just say that this is normally uh, the enemy team try to sink the carrier so sometimes you spawn at the carrier and you are under fire already because they have closed the gap but that's why you need to you know see before you spawn using the spectator camera and ask use the chat and all that but anyway this is uh, a matter for to discuss on another video so yeah, let's uh, speed up a bit okay so we've got a few targets here we are right above them so we are gonna attack the very first one because I don't want to get into too much AA. Here is a Japanese DB which is going to be a perfect target. So we dive and we prepare our last approach. He's not opening on me, he's saving his shot. And okay. Nice. But as always, I managed to damage my propeller, which sucks. But it happens i could have returned to the uh, to the uh, carrier but um yeah i fucked it up anyway i'm gonna try and strafe this guy i don't know it, it seems like if you pass too close to the uh, between the, the, the last cables and the two bits you kind of destroy your propeller but anyway that was a good dive though Okay, so for this one, we have the the other payload. This is a much lower VR game, I believe. We should be on around 4.0 or something like that. But I want to show you how bad I am with the rockets. <laughs> I don't know. You, you really have to be very, very precise with them to get to get the kills. So you need to to aim for the for the ammunition and it's not easy it's not easy because you are going at such a high speed you your handling is not the best at those speeds but and you have to be very quick because you want to try and release your your bombs as well to secure secure the kill in some cases if you get the kill with the rockets i mean fair play don't don't release them try to go for the multi-kill yeah, sometimes rock, the rockets are just not enough. 
here we go, finally I decide what target I should go for. I also align for rockets, stand and bomb room if possible. But let's see. Let's see. We're going for this Italian DD here at the cap. Let's release the rockets. The enemy controls most of the and I'm out, but I can still drop the bombs. And can we get the kill? In this game, we do have rockets and bombs again. And we're just scanning for targets. There's a candidate over there, but he's, he's not affecting the game over there. So I'd rather, I'd rather try and go for targets that are going to... Make uh, make our game uh, more difficult. So I tell my tell my teammates to defend B because that's where the enemy concentration of ships are. And giving them that info, it's uh, valuable for the team. And then I'm gonna just try and fly over uh, this spawn point while I just come for little pity votes, and it pays off because there's one little bullet over there. As you can see, he's right there. So yeah, I'm gonna try and die from him. Because there is, that concentration of enemies is it's gonna be nearly impossible to approach without dying. So I, I prefer to get the, the easy kill. And... Yep. We got the strafe kill. And now we are just gonna try and get another kill. See if we can get some heads here and yep. Not today. Back with the 1000 pound bombs. Real new. <laughs> right, so we are picking up some speed, diving and trying to see which is going to be our target. We kind of spread and the game is already over uh, so this is a matter of securing a kill for us not just trying to to go for the game because my team is not it's not going for it and it, they're not going to come back from this because uh, at this point it was basically three or four players on my team against the whole enemy team so yeah, try and secure the kill that's the mission for today. <laughs> so yeah, we've got a candidate here. We are approaching at very high speed. We're gonna go up and down, wiggle a little bit because we are on the target right now. He's firing AP to me and that's not gonna help me. And yeah, release and goodbye. <laughs> the last one this is a 6.0 game so it's there is cruises all around and we are losing but I can make my team's life a bit easier if I bomb at the concentration of ships I just wish my teammates could see that a it's uh, it's there for grab. It's there to be grabbed, and then uh, but now they just even destroyers are spawning. Uh, the cruiser spawn. They're just not making it. But anyway, that's how the game goes sometimes. So yeah, we're trying to select our target. And the enemy has yeah, captured it's, uh, most time to There's another one. There's another one at the back. There's a Belfast at the front, right. And we are under fire of HBT already, so we need to we need to get the target and fast. The Northampton is sunk, then this guy is nearly sink, but we could maybe secure the kill. No, nope, it's just been done. So that leaves us with this guy here, which is dangerously close to a enemy Helena, which is firing on me already. This guy's not, so thanks for that. And we are 
try and bomb you. Release and yeah, just look good. There you go. Nice kill. And yeah, that's what happened at 6.0. You get shredded to bits. 